The last time the Longhorns contended for a national championship on the gridiron, boy, you have to go back to last decade, 2009. Their quarterback was Colt McCoy, a school legend. Their defense played with reckless abandonment. That team got all the way to the national championship game in Pasadena, only to lose to Alabama. Well, if you look at this decade in terms of national championship contenders from UT, you're not going to find any. Only one time, in fact, in the 2010s have they even contended for the Big 12 title, and three years ago, they lost to Baylor the final week. The Longhorns this decade have barely won more games than they've lost, and in the case of Charlie Strong, now entering year number three, he's lost more games than he's won. Yeah, they beat OU and Baylor last year, but went 3-7 and seven against everybody else in 2015. I don't know how many games Strong needs to win this season to feel good about his job status entering 2017, but one thing's for sure, the team has to show notable improvement. But give Strong credit, he's trying to make the offense um, a little bit more up-tempo, and that's because he's hired a new offensive coordinator coming from Tulsa that is Sterling Gilbert. Like I said, it's going to be more of an up-tempo offense. They'll spread it out, but trust me, they will not neglect the ground attack. Last season, 17th in the country when it came to rushing. Deontay Foreman and Chris Warren, two terrific options at running back. Now, in terms of the passing game, this was a different story. Just about the opposite, if you will. 117th in the country out of 128 teams when throwing the ball. And that total says it right there. When you only throw for nine TD passes for the entire season, it's no wonder you didn't go to a bowl game and only won five games. In fact, they didn't even break the 150 passing plateau per contest. So, quarterback, we've said it time and time again. It needs to get better. Tyrone Swoops now entering third year at UT. And he's challenged heavily, though, right now by Shane Bouchel, the freshman. And Coach Strong has already said that these guys are both going to play against Notre Dame. So see, is as the season goes, if one of these guys can get separation from the other or if it will be a two-quarterback system. Wide receiver-wise, yeah, they do lose Marcus Johnson and Dace Johnson. Uh, but they should be just fine there because of the emergence of John Burt. Now, John Burt last year as a freshman uh, definitely uh, was a highlight reel. He definitely did some great things for them. And speaking of guys that, you know, could make an immediate impact, how about Colin Johnson, a uh, true freshman that will play in year number one? Armani Foreman, by the way, will add to the wide receiver depth for this team. And don't forget about the tight end as well in Caleb Bluett and Gerard Hurd. Remember him? Quarterback from a year ago. Looks like they'll use him more as a wideout with that, his athleticism. That makes sense. Offensive line-wise, they do return some guys, including the veteran, the senior, that's uh, Kent Perkins. But they'll move him from right tackle to guard on that side. And at the center position, watch for the freshman in Zach Shackelford. Okay, one of the new ones for the Longhorns. Patrick uh, Vahe at uh, left guard last year played most of those games as a freshman. But UT so far during these August practices has been plagued by injuries, especially on the offensive line side. They've had to hold some guys back uh, lately, including Vahe. So you wonder what their status will be against Notre Dame. I think long term will be fine, but that opener against the Fighting Irish, who have a good defensive line, uh, Texas, who was already going to be tested anyway against the Irish D-line, will now uh, really have to watch what their status will be in terms of their offensive line, especially the interior, entering that opener on a Sunday night. The guy that you just saw there, Texas fans know who he is. That is Malik Jefferson. Last year as a freshman, not only met all the hype, but really surpassed it. Over 60 tackles for the linebacker, and he made the freshman All-American team. Entering this season as just a sophomore, you have a feeling the best is yet to come for number 46. And Anthony Wheeler, not too bad either. He played as a freshman last year as well. So Texas, under the 4-2-5 defensive format, in terms of linebackers, should be set. Of course, it's going to take help from that defensive line, which last year got run-driven, giving up well over 200 yards on the ground per game. And if you're looking at this season's Longhorn defensive line at tackle, this is an area where it's just not a whole lot of optimism. Yeah, you got some veterans. You got Paul Boyd at one side, and you got, you know, uh, Puna Ford at the other, but not a lot of proven depth in terms of the defensive tackle. So that could be a struggle for the Longhorns. But what shouldn't be will be the defensive ends. Last year, the Longhorns as a team, not bad, 37 sacks on the season. And you have uh, Nashon Hughes, he returns. And Listen for this newcomer, okay? Malcolm Roach, I think, will play as a freshman. But Texas last year, like I said, they really regressed in 2015 as 
as far as the total defense, they didn't even finish in the top 100 after the year before placing in the top 25. So Vince Bedford knows that this is a big year uh, for their defense to try to get back what they had two years ago. Um, in terms of the secondary, uh, very athletic. I know that they lose Duke Thomas, who's a good cover guy, and also they used him, you know, from time to time on blitzes. I think they will miss him, but uh, they can pick up the slack perhaps with other corners, which I think they could have a good rotation. Holton Hill, as well as Devontae Davis, occupying the corners, and Chris Boyd will probably be a part of that mix too. In terms of the safeties, uh, Dylan Hayes, the veteran, the senior, they'll have him along with Jason Hall. But the guy that's really being challenged by Hall as far as the other safety position is going to be uh, Deshaun Elliott. So I think there's enough athleticism, enough talent for Texas' secondary to be just fine. But again, it's all predicated on that defensive line containing the run first. If they can do that, then Texas as a whole should bounce back defensively. Breaking down the Longhorn schedule, a game that could very well dictate how the rest of the season goes for both teams, the opener between the Fighting Irish and UT. Last year, Notre Dame humiliated Texas at South Bend. Of course, the Longhorns will have to contend with the Big 12 schedule that is filled with road games against Stillwater and Lubbock, which is not a bad thing because UT has not lost at Texas Tech this decade, and they haven't lost at Stillwater this century. But remember, too, that Texas has not won in Manhattan, Kansas, against the Wildcats since 2003. And oh, yeah, there's that game the second weekend of October against my Sooners. Going to watch that one? I look for the Longhorns to win eight. The defense should be better, and the running game should still be a part of the Texas offense, but it'll still take them time to get adapted to the new offense that Gilbert has installed. Eight wins, which you think would be enough for Charlie Strong to retain his job in ring 2017.